Hi, I'm going to show you my simple method for framing a pastel painting. Here I'm just making sure that my glass is nice and clean. I'm using museum glass and it gives better reflection control. Now I'm taking my frame spacers. You can buy them anywhere online. Uh, glass spacers, art spacers. They're made of plastic and they have one side that has an adhesive strip. You pull off the paper and that exposes the adhesive and you carefully place it on the glass, not on the wood, only on the glass and press firmly. Once in place, it does not come off very easy. So make sure you have it in the right place before you press down. And then continue to do so all the way around all four sides. I take my, my handy little fisherman's scissors. I love this little tool. It cuts things in my studio very well. I picked it up at, a, at an act, auction, antique auction. I will continue to work this way around all four sides, the edges of the glass. These frame spacers are fairly easy to cut. You can cut them with a, a, a sharp carpenter's knife or a, a sharp knife of any sort, craft knife. I try not to put any fingerprints on the glass while I'm doing this. Finish up the last side. There you can get a better look at the strips I'm talking about. My pastel painting is already lightly mounted on foam core. Everything I use is acid free. It's archival, so we don't have to worry about that in the future. After placed where I want it, I turn it up on its edge. That way the vibration from my framing tool does not knock the pastel down onto the clean glass. This is a nice little trick that works really well. I put at least three on a large painting like this, three, maybe four on all sides. It shoots the framing tool right into the wood so you don't have to worry about your art coming loose. Now I take two inch wide black masking tape. You can buy it in any art supply store. I order mine online because I live in a rural area where there's no art supply stores, but you can find it in any art supply. It also is archival, so I don't have to worry about that. And this gives it a nice dust free, clean appearance on the back without using craft paper. I think this gives it a nicer, cleaner finish. And it's a lot more simple. I trim it off, tr trim it off nice and easy on the corners so it's nice and smooth and square looking to give it a more of a finished look. This keeps dusts and pests and everything else and moisture from getting into your finished piece also. Trim off the final corner and that's it for the for, for the trim. Now I put on my certificate of authenticity. 
I use some archival double-sided framers tape. It's also known as AGM tape to adhere my certificate to the back of my painting. I do this on all of my artwork. I place it on the center, make sure it's on the on the bottom. Place it in the center and the lower bottom of my on the reverse side of the painting. And I take a pen and I write the title of each of the paintings on that certificate so it's there for future reference. Once that's done, I'll flip the painting around so that the top is facing me. And I will get my hanging hardware. For this painting, I'm using a two hole D ring. It's a little heavier for this size of a painting. So it will take two screws on each one. I space them evenly from the top. And place in the screws. One nice thing about the two hole D rings is that it keeps your hardware from spinning on like it can on just one. I measure the distance from the edge of the frame so that they're fairly equal. Doesn't have to be super precise, but they should be closely the same. Now this framing technique should work for almost any gallery or any patron. Uh, I know some galleries are a little more particular. They want everything done in the same as they have everyone else frame it. But I've never had a problem with these. this technique. It's worked well. It's never been rejected yet. And once I get all the hardware finished, then I'll attach the wire for hanging. I'm using a braided wire because it's a little heavier. And when you do the cleaning, make sure you use a non-ammonia cleaner, glass cleaner. Because it uh, on some of these non-reflective glass, especially the acrylic, the ammonia can actually affect the glass and, re and the coating, so you want to make sure you use a non-ammonia cleaner. I just use that for all of my work that way. I twist the wire and I measure it to the other side and I put a kink right where I want it and add a couple inches so I can twist it around that side and cut it using my scissors. I twist this side around. Double check the height of the wire. Everything looks snug. And I'll take a one inch black masking tape and wrap it around that twisted area just for extra safety and caution and strength reduces the chance of that wire untwisting at all and also ends jabbing into fingers. I'll do that on both sides.
This method of framing could work for watercolors or drawings, charcoal, what, any kind of paper artwork, where you want a separation from the glass, and the technique in the back would be the same. And there you have it. It is finished. The finished product. Now here it is hanging on the wall. Thank you for stopping by. Check out my website. Talk to you later.